South Africa, millions of people are living with HIV, but only a third of them can get the life-saving drugs that they need, leaving many desperate for treatment. A multitude of so-called miracle cures is filling the gap. Here's our story. With HIV AIDS rampant in the country, vast numbers of South Africans are in need of effective medical care. But it's a need that far too often goes unmet. The problem is that only a minority have access to antiretroviral drugs, the sole proven treatment for HIV infection. The rollout of these drugs to public hospitals has been painfully slow, leaving a huge pool of desperately ill people unable to afford effective health care. That's left the door open to hucksters and voodoo scientists, peddling cures for anything from bad marriages and cancer to HIV. Dr. Mama, you're speaking to Dimi. Our reporter Dimi Raporto sets out to meet the people promising miracle cures and their victims. I've been collecting a lot of pamphlets and I would like to come and see you in connection with the treatment. Dimi's first port of call is a marketplace in Cape Town. Andile Makondile fell victim to a bogus treatment. When I found that I'm HIV positive, the first thing I went to is a, it's a, it's a traditional healer. I met this guy from Malawi, he told me that he can cure HIV and AIDS. But the promise proved empty. He gave me five liters of, of, of medicine, traditional medicine to drink and vomiting and give me syringes. You know, I stayed there rather about, uh, I think, uh, up about a month, but I didn't see any improvement. By the time Makondile sought hospital treatment, he was at death's door. Just in time, he was given a course of antiretrovirals, and his life has returned to normal. He now works for the Treatment Action Campaign to educate his community about HIV and AIDS. Not far from his office in Cape Town, an array of concoctions are on display. Dubious claims about their health benefits are all part of the marketing, not least for a product called Aloe Extra. One bottle can cure everything. They can treat you if you have asthma, TB, and other things, then you take it. But Aloe Extra is number one. Aloe Extra is produced by a company called Nature's Health. Colin Katz, the man behind Nature's Health, promotes aloe for the treatment of HIV, even though there's not a scrap of credible evidence to support it. We spoke to a lot of people, some were university professors. We also spoke to a, a very well-known traditional healer. But our focus was very much on natural remedies for HIV AIDS. Aloe extract itself can be toxic. Medical so doctor and food scientist Harris Steinman no has long challenged the false claims toxic. made by sellers of health products, subjecting them to tests in his lab. But despite his efforts, Quack doctors can be found selling their wares all over the country. So is there any proof that this aloe extract or any aloe extract does not cause toxicity? We know that aloe extract can actually affect the kidneys and damage it irreversibly. Dimi Raporto's next visit is to this building, the home of an outlandish treatment called ozone rectal therapy. People who are HIV positive, they realize it's their last chance they will pay. It's their life. Owner Abri Flock claims without any justification that ozone rectal therapy can remove HIV from the body. Flock's story sounds just like science fiction, complete with references to space technology. With the aid of hand-drawn illustrations, Flock describes a device that he says can invade HIV cells and explode them. It attacks the white cell and penetrates the virus. But no scientist has been able to do this. When ozone was tested in Canada in the 1990s on people with HIV, it didn't work. How did so many South Africans find themselves looking for alternative cures for HIV? We've just been shopping. If there's one product that's been shown to be not only useless... But Seasoned dangerous. HIV activist Nathan Geffen says the country's political leaders delayed the introduction of antiretrovirals and instead promoted quacks. Quackery occurs everywhere in every society, but usually it occurs at the margins of society. And the reason why quackery has become mainstream in South Africa 
is because quacks have received the political support of the Minister of Health, the previous Minister of Health, Manchi Shabalala Msimang, and the previous President, Thabo Mbeki. His wife. As a result, critics say that many South Africans were encouraged to turn to treatments that had no chance of helping them. Dimi tries out a treatment called Serogem. Yeah, yeah. I'm on fire. A massage bed that was registered by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for treatment of stiffness, minor muscle aches, and joint pains. It is hot. Yeah. But some operators in South Africa are claiming much more for the massage bed. This event in Johannesburg sounds and looks like some kind of religious revival meeting. But in fact, it's a sales pitch for Serajim. The salesman, Morakane Choma, suggests quite falsely that Serajim can help with HIV AIDS. His sales pattern is all about CD4 counts, a measure used by doctors to assess HIV infection. So somebody came here with a, with a law, you know, the CT4 and, and everything. Now, after, after experiencing the effectiveness of Saragem, they go back to the doctors, and then the doctors write them notes and say, wow, you are now alive because your immune system, or rather your CT4 count is up, it's no more longer here. In 2005, a state attorney general in the United States banned Saragem from making exaggerated claims. But in South Africa, that hasn't stopped unscrupulous salesmen exploiting the vulnerable and the sick. Unless antiretroviral drugs quickly become available to all the South Africans who need them, many are at risk of following in the footsteps of Andile Makondile, who turned to charlatans for help and nearly lost his life.